Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two. Just give me a sec. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the Basic Materials Project. I don't think we're getting the volume already. Really. I've got any volume now. Right. I can't really see. One, two, one, two. Seems about right actually. Bit, bit quiet. A bit quiet on. There we go. Hold on a sec. One two one two one two. Mic check. One two one two one two. Mic check. One two. One two one two. One two one two. Mic check. One two. One two. One two one two. Okay, uh, we'll just have to sort it out in post. Welcome to the Best Materials Project. Okay, today, we, uh, just to keep up to date, we've got uh, the Windows Server 2022 and uh, trying to get the AMD graphics card to work with. It's obviously it's an evaluation edition, so it's not a product shipped yet. But apart from that, it's actually all right, it's uh, lightning fast. Easy to set up domains, websites, create user groups and accounts and welcome people onto the VPN. And it's also great for remote controlling other computers in the network as well. It's generally speaking simple. Uh, however, we've just got to mention the device drivers. Obviously, Windows Server has a different device driver platform. So we tried bashing a few audio equipment through it. And, uh, you know, it only can drop, it seems to have like some sort of, you can't drop device drivers on top of each other like you can on the Windows uh, 10. Uh, we, we do that all the time for sampling and what have you, so. Yeah, it, it, it's got a problem with installing device drivers uh, and a couple of applications fault on it. Uh, but apart from that, uh, for, for managing, uh, it's great. As you'd expect, like obviously Windows Server 2020. I went. I remember Windows Server coming out. Uh, I remember Windows Server 2000. Uh, Windows Server 2003 with .NET. Uh, well, just about 20 years ago now. Next year it will be 20 years. Now it's .NET 6 with C Sharp and the Unreal Engine. Right, brilliant, really. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've got some uh, uh, questions about this Bitcoin and cryptography and stuff like that and uh to be honest I'm not really an expert or anything like that, I don't know I don't know much about that. So it's one of them. Is it worth is it worth investing time and effort and all that to become a Bitcoin developer? The word is that there's lots of jobs going, like everybody seems to be jumping on the bandwagon, especially with these NFTs. We're seeing sports clubs and uh, collectibles really, really like it. Uh, no doubt there'll be a, a, a Sovereigns and uh, football stickers as well. You know, you get, you remember your football stickers, you get a shiny you get every day. You know, if, if you're a top player in the world, you get a shiny football sticker, don't you? NFT is perfect for it. Uh, the thing is this though, we, the smart contracts, uh, basically what, what that, 
well, an NFT sort of thing would kind of allow you to do. If you're an artist, like if you're a musician or a graphic designer and what have you. But the underlying technology, I don't, I don't know too much about it, but it's only a matter of time for somebody uh, puts uh, a music player on it. Like, there'll be a new standard. So, in audio, we work with loads of standards yeah, throughout the years, and all the different manufacturers have drawn little codecs. It can be it can be a pain, especially if you're trying to produce and don't know anything about it. Like, like you could get caught in the bramble bushes with it. Uh, but once we figured out, once we figured out how to get uh, NFT to play video or play music, okay, or well, it's going to be works of art with some animation in them. Like, uh, once the smart contract itself is is self-contained, okay. For now, we. We're totally interdependent, yeah. You know what I'm saying. The, you know, there's massive amount of interconnectedness going on. Uh, we discussed it on previous podcasts. Uh, without having to go back and revisit all that, it, the smart contract, the theory is that you can put it all together, like in some sort of capsule, or encapsulate it all. So, to play a song, you won't need iTunes, or you know, you won't need Windows Media Player. He'll have the capability, right? And that's uh, this uh, th- 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 encapsulated computing, perhaps you could say. And the fact that if you could put it all in the uh, uh, NFT, maybe it's something that will go in the NFT wallet, where it'll be like some sort of codex standard, or have you? You can put all sorts in there, even algorithms and computations as well. So you could. Use it like presently the way we do things with dynamic link libraries on Windows or .so files on Linux. Like it, it could eventually challenge that computing model, like like that, you know the present computing paradigm could be totally challenged. Yeah, we're going to the uh, new Nvidia slash Intel slash Windows Trinity, aren't we? As well, that's what somebody's pointed out to me that they seem to be making some subtle moves. As regards, and especially Call of Duty, right, you're going to see these i12 laptops with NVIDIA in the Call of Duty sort of thing. And you're probably going to see some sort of like contest is going to be, I don't know where. Uh, it seems that it's like a bit of like a casino mental- mentality, like where they only want the biggest acts. Like, so if you go to Las Vegas and go to the casino, they have... DJTS stores, one in a million dollars a night, or something like that, a million dollars a show, something like that in Las Vegas. I, it, there seems to be that mentality, yeah. Like, and that seems to be what people seem to be swiping intellectual property in culture, yeah, and making a profit out of it. Uh, Spotify, imagine everything on Spotify, every single post. That, uh, you know, because it's all about revenue share, isn't it, and, and the rest of it, platforms versus artists. Well, imagine your artist can put everything together in a smart contract so it doesn't need Windows Media Player or it doesn't need iTunes to play. It, it doesn't actually need anything. It doesn't need an operating system. It doesn't need the logon, password, encryption, certificate. Right, so it's challenging the paradigm. I think that's kind of where this smart contract thing is going. Uh and, you know, I had a fellow mention uh, ETH, was it ETH and XRP Ripple? No idea what all that is like, but the idea of putting a smart contract out there with uh, legal property rights is all good and well, but I'm thinking, why don't you put minimum amount of computational complexity inside of the smart contract so it has everything it needs? Say, for example, your smart contract could, could contain your favourite song. Like, forget about ownership and... Uh, uh, like stickers and uh, was it uh, was collectible? Uh, was it baseball cards or soccer cards or what have you? You used to get them on cigarettes, didn't you? You used to get cigarette cards. Like yeah, there's all all of that and obviously Sotheby's auctioning off the top M- NFTs and the rest of it. But the fact of the matter is this: if, when they become encapsulated, like self-identifying encapsulated computational units, that's going to that is going to change the nature of reality itself. Basically, because you won't need a Windows. Uh, you're right. Right now, I'm struggling to shell out an extra hundred quid for a Windows operating system. I could go open source on Linux, but it's not going to work because nothing is self-contained. For example, if I want to, you know, I can't use Adobe. If I could get my Adobe Creative Cloud and my Adobe apps 
has a smart contract with enough computational power within it, right, then the operating system market, you know, Windows, Apple, it'll be, it'll, they stand to lose, the biggest companies on the planet stand to lose every little thing. If these self-encapsulated smart contracts become available, you know, and they become the generic standard, like for example, you'll get some sort of, I don't know, like a holographic diamond or something like that, or or like you know some sort of, uh, sort of like I don't know, silicon, like a silicon precipitation or something like that, kind of like a bit of a QR code, where it has computational elements in it, right? So. I don't know, it's like, we're used to it, the dual, dual nature of things, for example, we have a record player, and we have a record, or we have a CD player, and we have a CD, or we have an MP3, now we bought an MP3 album uh, from Bandcamp, or whatever, and we have an MP3 player, yeah, it, it, engineering itself, every, every little thing is going to evolve because of this, if it becomes generically available, Alright, so the the f- component object module we've been into it before on podcasts like com decom ActiveX, which is still you still get it on in Windows twenty twenty two the Windows Community Edition Visual Studio so it's still there. Right, obviously that's infrastructure. Mm. Adobe works just like it though. Like you know you can program your own stuff, your own filters for Adobe, and it can take them on. Like. It's, the question is, though, with this smart contract thing, it's like the Apple Mac sort of thing, and Apple Mac sort of throughout the generations are complete. You don't, you don't break them apart and change the pieces here and there and everything like that. They're always famous for having a completion about the design, whereas the IBM ATX format, that what we generally generally think is a personal computer, a desktop computer, or even a server, yeah, it's generally speaking the same. All the individual component parts are split apart in... Uh, was it the Toyota production system or was it Ford, Henry Ford production system, that kind of mentality and then we've seen it's uh, opposite or what is it the Formula 1 mentality, we've got F1 hybridicity, so we've we've talked about F1 hybridicity previously like it's a design mentality for example it starts with Formula 1 like where you, where you can have the king with all the entourage, like, and if you can run it a certain way, like, that's how you achieve, that's how you achieve victory, say, in the race, like, so, the whole swipe out component object module thing, uh, like, it, it's got us this far, and it's allowed each individual component part to be process engineered, so you can have a team of specialists working on every single part, that sort of complexity, and that model of architecture, it's an architecture model, like it's a superimposition of an architectural way of thinking, basically, where everything's split apart, and that's what allows everything. That that's what allows a global economy, basically, the whole entire shebang, really. Right, and that's that. That's the whole idea: commerce and uh, you know, big business and the rest of it. That's kind of like, and it's the same for security-wise as well. You have all the elements in there and that, but. Like, for example, you could easily create a smart contract and you wouldn't know anything about it in the shadow of the exact opposite smart contract. Like, to put them two together, like in a blockchain sort of thing. I would get to the state. I mean, if computers... I mean, will it get to the point where when you print out a smart contract, you actually have a physical ink, your magnetic ink. For example, you can get a heat heat printer, 300 DPI label printer, for example, or a heat printer. What happens when you can got your desktop printer that can print, you know, silicon circuits or what have you? They could be completely and utterly encrypted, but also self-contained. All right, so you know you could, you know, you could receive a smart contract in the mail. You know, this three hundred DPI sort of label sort of thing. And if you have the the relative other smart contract, the relative other side of the, uh, like you know, encryption decryption per. It could be like there could be money inside it, but there also could be like computer programs and software. There could be uh, video and film as well, but it could be self-contained. Right, so it, and there would have to be something similar as a reader writer. So like, yeah, there's three parts of computers. Yeah, you got you know you know how it is at the minute in the economy. 
You know what I mean? When you're deciding whether to splash 1,500 quid on that new i12 with NVIDIA and leave everybody out with even more more performance. It's kind of the same, but better, but smaller and more and more packed out. Like, and it has the front of the queue, isn't it? Like, do I like, like a herd of buffalo running along the field? They've got the buffalo at the very front. Uh, obviously, he gets he gets to eat the grass first by getting there first, or what have you? I don't know. But you see the evolution, like and and, and that continued line of development. Moore's law, right? But with these self-contained smart contracts, if we, if we carry it on to its like natural conclusion, especially, I mean, are you going to put three D quantum dots? Like, so if you had a small quantum computer that was printed on a smart contract, like, like a 300 DPI label print out, that could, like, that could have serious, like, you could, like, obviously if there's some sort of, it has to be some sort of uh, anti-symmetry or, like, some sort of anti-thesis or anti-equivalent, yeah, that you could you could put a smart contract into, but it could quite possibly be anything from machine instructions, you know, to 3D print outs. It could be designs of engines, like, in the holographic tech. Like it could be, I don't know, immaterial almost, like quasi-immaterial technology, like or holographic technology, quasi-immaterial ho- holographic technology, right? Eight score from an ancient alien sort of like History Channel tangent, like with the crystal skulls and you know like whatever the rocks have got programs inside of them, right? We could quite possibly achieve that. It's, it's it's one of those things silicon printing at home. You know, it's just people talk about stuff like that. I mean, you can print silicon, like you could print your own circuit. You don't really have your know, core inside of it all, if you know what I mean, you'd be the master of it all, really, and it could be wholly self contained, like and, and not ab- obliterated. And and at the same time though, it could be wholly and completely encrypted as well. Like you could put that much mathematical encryption in it. I and it's perceptual or conceptual like the idea, but it's one thing putting a car payment, you know, like you take a loan out to buy a car. It's one thing putting that on the blockchain, like that's smart. It's another thing putting your business on it. It's another thing putting your NFTs or all your artists for your favourite record label. They're all they've all got NFTs or what have you. And like if you owned Say for example, you could print like one million copies of the album. Uh, somebody did this and sold them for a dollar and put it in a blockchain. So all the million people that bought that album for one US dollar, they have a little piece of the blockchain that's got the album in it, and they can say they own the album, so they have the rights to play it. A bit like the TV license saying, "Oh, you've got a radio, you have to pay to listen to the radio." You know, it's taxed in it. That's definitely. There's a lot of there's a lot of bramble bushes and foreign issues down that way, but wholly self-contained sort of smart contracts like could be completely and utterly independent. Right now, what we're seeing is interdependence really on an extreme le- level. It's the men- it's the mentality of the engineers and the architecture, yeah, structural architecture of the mind, as it were, of the minds that yeah, are into it. They think like this, or they perceive like this, or they build like this, that's their architecture, that's the level of their architecture. Like and that's what's um right. when it goes wrong, that's the cause of why it goes wrong. But when it works out, it does allow so much more to be built. But I'm talking there's another level here that humanity could achieve in, in terms of its engineering and, and, and design and that's wholly self contained smart contracts like the with sort of like well, well, printed silicon. Like if you could print computational elements, it'd be wholly self-contained. Like obviously, it's like one of them. You put it. You need uh, expressiveness. I'll say expression. Because right now, if I want to play a song, yeah. Well, we we'll go go back to singing songs. We are electricity, ain't it? We'll go some start singing opera songs. But you, there's chain of independence. Like you need the power supply, you need the device. The device needs the operating system. It's you know several thousand subcontractors made all the parts. When it, when you when you spread it out like the whole entire job, when you stack it up you know, via the layers and stuff like that, 
you say that wherever you are in it, you're in the level. Like, I don't remember Doom 4. If you look at the levels on Doom 4, the way they're built, you're kind of there in it. Like, but you can imagine it can be a super canister. Like, like a super smart contract that's wholly self encrypted. Like, and the encryption would be unfathomable. Like, really, it would be. And it would be of a higher form and of a higher mentality because encryption in the 90s, pretty much anybody today could decrypt everything in the 90s. It could decrypt military communications, top secret stuff. You know, from the, certainly because as the generations get better, you know, we would have took forever to say in the 80s, it would have took forever to do the encryption. But in the 90s, it, would, it wouldn't have took that long. And it, so the 90s bust the 80s. But in the twenty thousands or whatever, they busted the nineties, twenty tens bust, busted the noughties, and the twenty twenties busted the twenty tens as it, as, it, as it were. There's a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, and not a lot of achieving. There's a lot of theories and a lot of projects and a lot of designs. But as regards to finished products, right? So theoretically speaking, the whole like there, there could actually be a league of tech. Yeah, we we're assuming that this tech is the greatest tech of all time. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, like, there could be another level. Like, if you draw a smart contract, a super smart contract that was wholly self-contained, you definitely you'd be. It, I don't know. You'd be totally in independent of everything. So, for example. Uh, the chain of self, the chain of independence. So, for example, all your applications depend on your operating system. All of your operating system depends on your hardware. All of your hardware depends on like the power supply, and all of your internet depends on the network. So it's a whole entire ecosystem and fabric. Like even if, even if you used to go on the web or use your phone, that nah, people take it for granted and they just use it every day, all the time. I'm not really concerned about how it, how it all works and that. But the very fact is, just the very architecture of itself has all of these flaws uh, inside of it. Right. Right. But obviously, what's the other alternative? Is everybody starts walking around with a smartphone that's got a super smart contract that's wholly self contained, it would be wholly encrypted. Right. And I don't know how it works. I suppose if every smartphone was wholly encrypted with a super smart contract, then there could be the internet of that would be far bigger, even in, uh, what was it, Internet 6 or whatever it's called, TCP IP 6. You wouldn't, it, this would blow that away. Like, if you know what I mean, there's, I think there's a coming leak in, inside of these wholly self contained super smart contracts. There's a hypothetical leap in in the thinking about the architecture of how we made things. This is the technology that's took us to today, and that's the art and the architecture of it. You know, that's the structure, systems have been built, government, regulatory, market. But the whole superimposition of all that, that's caused all of that, there's a theory beyond their theory, yeah. Like, there's a vision beyond their vision. Like, their vision's, like... Like, like they it's like they're happy with things the way they are. They're not looking to make the leap into the next dimension, like whatever the next reality. They're not interested. Like they they're not like you know they're not willing to leave all of this behind. Like and the amount of computation complexity and what you could achieve in terms of but it's just, it's a it's an architectural concept. What I'm discussing today, I say, and I'm not even sure if I, I even know what I'm talking about. But the uh, general idea is this: How smart can a smart contract be? It's irrelevant because you're always going to need Windows. You're always going to need your Apple. You're always going to need your Google Androids. And obviously, you can make your own as well. But in, in which case, like, there's just uh, how it is. Like, we may have superseded the tech. Like, like of, of of now of today. So, the point being is this: if my encryption, yeah, is greater than your encryption, then all of your encryption is whole, wholly within all of my encryption. Yet my encryption is still greater. 
So in terms of computation, what you can see and perceive, yeah, and create, right? Like my if if my encryption is some greater mathematical, like transcendental mathematical order in a higher dimension, then it well not only does it can it contains all your encryption, it, it's bigger than all your encryption, so you can't see beyond it, if you know what I mean, you can't perceive it, it's there. Like right? so and it's all about cryptography, all of life. Yeah, it's all about encryption and about codes, stuff like that. And really, that's it's like who eats who, something like that. For example, if my encryption and cryptography is greater than yours, for example, I'm a country uh, with nuclear warheads, whatever, and you're a country with nuclear warheads, or we're at war with each other, and your encryption is only so good. If my encryption is greater than that, I decrypt everything about you. Like, there's that, that concept. Right, but... And we're always going to be who eats who, you know what I'm saying? Like, who eats who, you know, who eats who, you know what I mean? It's like, and all the way down, like, and that's, this encapsulation is mathematical encryption. Like, so it stands, it stands to reason, almost, that there is a transcendental dimension in mathematics, that there's, there's beyond what we can perceive here. And the artificial intelligence, and all of the matrix, and the rest, we all know have ideas about all that sort of thing, like, you know, I love talk radio. I'm a big fan. I listen to lots of talk radio all the time. It's called to have it on in the workshop. What I'm saying is this. If you could imagine some super intelligent, like higher order, like better than you at mathematics, like by infinite and unlimited numbers, like by a transcendental mathematics, they could easily take out everything. You know, they could take out Apple, they could take out Microsoft. Take out Google. They could take out the Chinese tech giants as well. China's got tech giants. India's got tech giants. Kind of seems like only American tech giants are getting, you know, targeted for their bad conducts, something like that, politicized or something like that. Nobody's mentioning eurozone tech giants or Chinese tech giants. Or oh, it's like, so it's like, you know, it's one of them. But if your encryption was on a on a transcendental level. All of the army and the military and you know, like all the spying and all that stuff, it would it would contain all of it in a higher order mathematically, and it, and not only that, within a level of encryption and cryptography, you could never ever reach it. Like you couldn't do it mathematically because you you're wholly contained by, by these metaphysics, like. Say, for example, the theorem, you know what I'm saying? The theories that go into the theories, that go into the theories, that go into the theories, sort of thing. Uh, what I'm saying is this is quite possible, yeah. Right now, this uh, the XRP ripple, like, it, it, everybody reckons that's, that's the ultimate level of technology. Like, like that's the greatest one, right? Uh, we've done some entry-level blockchain programming, like, but that's that's for the placing of bets and or smart contracts or what have you. Like, so it's a bit, you know. I can see it definitely working. I can see it being handy for like, for example, basic basic attention token. Uh, you could quite easily use basic attention token if it had the capability to play audio uh, on radio talk radio adverts, where you could actually buy a basic attention token advert and you be able to place it there and then. Do you know, right now it's done through SQL and all that stuff, but you could actually place it onto the blockchain, as it were. So you could have, say, for example, uh, a massive into internet radio and that. We did some projects a long time ago with Shoutcast and Icecast. That's kind of been replaced a bit by this JavaScript. So today, now it's relatively easy to do with JavaScript. The idea that... Uh, like you could like, but it will always be backwards looking blockchain in a way. Like I suppose unless you're creating cryptocurrency and that, the concept really is this. Uh, I think there's going to be a time soon. There's going to be a super smart contract. It's going to be like a 300 DPI printout that has computation. It'll got silicon built in, and you can press play on it. For example, like you know where, say you buy an album. Like it'll come as a label or something like that, and you will be able to press play on it and it'll play. Like I don't know how you'd blob everything in together as one like uh, until that time though. What I'm saying is this there's a complete a completion, an architecture, a capstone, like you know at the top of the pyramid that is complete. Like I'm not talking about the the egg in the nest model, like or 
you know, you are in a tornado or whatever, you know, wherever you are mathematically, like, in, you know, you know, how it's done, how people think about computers and IT and operating systems and stuff like that. And I think that, in a way, this could be, a, a, you know, it could be, like, have some sort of profound impacts on society because, like, it's one of those things, isn't it? I mean, you know, the way we do math now and the way theoreticians and research and development is what is created it. Like, even everything is determined by this, right? Like, this sort of logical architecture, this metaphysics, you know, everything. Every little thing. But what I'm saying is this, yeah, would he, if you could, like, if you can break the chain of interdependence, yeah, and get completion in the design, right, that is going to, like, if we, if we can put out technology, whether it's hardware, right, and if you could do these sorts of things, yeah, it'd move beyond. And we look at the... Uh, We'd move beyond reality, basically, and we'd enter into mythology. Like, we'd enter into uh, the, the wizard with his crystal ball, seeing and spying via a crystal ball, or whatever. You know what I mean? And we'd enter into that sort of sort of realm of mythology. Like, you, like it's one of them, but do you, do, does humanity need super smart contracts that are wholly self-contained and complete? Like, so, for example, if I had, like... Uh, Turn off the power on your website. It's all the very computer. If I just turn the power off, then it's lost forever, isn't it? In the hypothetical world of the internet, anything that depends on it is not going to work. It's going to break. So this chain of interdependency, we've seen it in our software in our previous episodes, developing and you know what have you. Like, and we've seen a, 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 a mathematical incompletion every time, no matter what platform we've used. Right, no matter what, there's always going to be that in it, and I think that's because the theorems, like the underlying architecture, there's faults in it, and they are because the computers do things millions of times a second or hundreds of billions of times a second. It amplifies that error or fault by a certain percent, and eventually, this underlying fault uh, presents itself at the surface as an error, or as an exception, or as a fault. Or as a crash, or as a bug, or as undefined behaviour. Like and this in software it's an it's that's that's where it goes. It's like the sea, isn't it? It rises you know, the sea rises and falls, don't it, according to the tide. And it's depending on you know, the shoreline, as it were. That that's that's what the two cycles are going on in uh, software engineering. Like you have you know, that's that process uh, refinement, that scrum, that agile methodology. So it, it's one of those things, isn't it? And that's like that's like that would be like god level architecture. That like that would have been architected by a supreme being, like who's just infinitely and unlimitedly more intelligent than we are. Like even though in mathematics, it's like in Formula One, isn't it? A few microseconds or what have you determines determines the results. Like and that's the best we can do things right now, humankind. The best. Yeah, what you think is the elite and the best is this F1 hybridicity program, which is what is the thinking that behind everything, basically. Like they, it's an architecture, it's a state of mind, like and it's a superimposition. Like that's that's what's you know that's what's going down on the report, uh, and you think that way because I tell you to think that way, and these are the results from it, like whatever the world, which so far so good. Like, but it's by no means like these timelines. By no means necessary set in stone. Like, there's you know there's no prophecy, so to speak, that determines anything. Really, uh, what what does determine everything is that level of interdependence. So, you know, and everything is based on the present level. Like we mentioned it, say for example, people in the third world. If people, you know, it, there's this total containment going on here where people are encrypting other people yeah you can say oh my boss encrypts me at work yeah so i'm i'm folded up in the encryption of my boss at work because i've got to take orders from him and within that smart contract or the computation like like a bunch of tumblers or canisters like or these all these things that may or may not occur within that timeline or within that 
bifurcation in the timeline, as it were. Like what I'm saying is this: as long as this interdependence occurs, this is what we get. Like, and it's we think perhaps it's necessary in the real world to get the job done. Like basically, so all the components need to be smashed into billions of pieces, yeah, and then put back together or pulled off the shelf together again in a new form. Like a new expression, like a new architected uh, result. However, the, the these challenges from a lot of quantum and uh, in particular self-contained smart contracts, if they had all of the computational complexity contained within, like there would be, you know, it 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 would end the world as we know it, basically in a nutshell. It would, like, so. A lot of people, like, today, and today, with everything, people, some people are going Amish, like, if you remember the Luddites, they went and smashed the cotton mill, they got mad, they went down, they went troubled out mill, yeah, troubled out mill, yeah, and smashed the cotton mill, and the Luddites started smashing the machines and that. It was the same with doctors, with these robotic surgeries, they ummed and awed about robotic surgeries, like, and then now they had to retrain themselves to use it for them to continue to be relevant and contemporary, like as it were. Like we'll like we'll go back to caveman we'll go back to the caveman era. And that we'll not use electricity or we'll not use coal, we'll not we'll not use petrol and diesel and stuff like that. What are people like uh especially the UFO people, you've got to love them. Well I love all that, uh, ancient aliens and that. Who doesn't? Well if you could have all this ancient alien technology and stuff like that, there goes everything like you know, it's like you can't if you're flying around in a flying saucer in a UFO, like you can't really be threatened by anyone, even if they've got nuclear warheads or jets and uh, aircraft carriers and stuff like that. They wouldn't even be able to see you, bro. They wouldn't even be able to catch you. Like, and oftentimes they would couldn't even probably tell. They couldn't even de-encrypt your presence through unencryption. Why have you? Because the the math, the transcendental mathematics, are beyond it. Like. And it, that's the question, isn't it? How how clever is your math and what can you build with your mathematics, yeah? So we go into this quantum sort of garbage, like, you know, particle accelerators and all that, like, and you think, oh, if mathematically, but you compute itself. So everything we could do with computers, yeah, is is a direct result. Yeah, there's an expansion, like a mathematical expansion. There was a mathematician called uh, Chaitin, yeah, I had a number named after him in mathematics, and which was basically, and I'd like to challenge that, you know, you know I would because I think it's a fault inside of the logic that makes it that, like I mentioned, it amplifies it and presents itself as an error. Like, and that's what I think it is. I don't think there's a statistic, there's a the statistical probability, yeah, of faulting. Like that, there's a mathematical number that there's a there's a probabilistic called Chaitin's number. If I'm understanding it uh, how we, how the author intended, that says there's a statistically mathematical statistical probability of your computer crashing or your software crashing. I say that it's something to do with the amount of error in our in our fundamentals amplifying up, and eventually it presents itself at the surface as a fault. Right, so it's. People think about these sorts of things, like for example, encryption. For for example, if you have a, an entirely random stream as close to random as possible, you can unencrypt to a certain extent by playing playing the timelines against each other, as it were, side by side. For example, you'd expect it to be random, but it's not. Or you, to the best of your ability to encode or deencode. All right, so. I think like some people like uh, on the internet, whether whether you know whatever side you go down, whether it's the Alex Jones and Joe Rogan and, and whatever side, or you go to the ancient alien side or what have you, or if you st- stay strictly mainstream, strictly legit, right? The point, uh, what I'm saying is they start. Uh, it's run away. It's run away from my mind. Like, well. They think, also, obviously, with all this stuff about spying and the rest of it, right, you know, we hear a lot about it in the media, if you've been listening to radio or whatever, watch telly about it. But, but what I'm trying to say is, 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 is it, 
Like again, if if such a person was so encrypted or whatever, such powerful cryptography, they would be beyond power. Like, like, I, they, you know, they'd be beyond the reach of the government. Like, but they'd be beyond the reach of the law. But they'd be beyond the reach of computational capability. So you'd never ever be able to catch up with them. Like, you'd never ever be able to compute it or think it, what have you. Theoretically speaking, and also as well, because. The idea is, who's encryption, yeah? Who's got the best encryption? And, and, and that's, you know, I don't think it's going to come down to knowledge and information and stuff like that and intelligence and all that stuff. I don't actually think in the final round, I think in the final round, it's whose encryption is the greatest encryption, right, in the mathematical sense. Because, you know, for you and me, everyday people, mate, encryption means whether we get hacked or not and we may lose... Uh, may lose some downtime or we may lose some bank balance. For us it's not we don't really have much to lose anyway. If what it truth be told. And what if you're a big bank or a big investment corporation or you're a big trust fund? What if you're a big company, like a top ten company in the world or what have you? You know, what if you've got a government or uh, well, you know, taking responsibility for all of these uh, concerns, yeah? And your cryptography, you think it's airtight. Like but if somebody greater than you has a greater encryption, you wouldn't even be able to sense or detect them, like you see, which is what is the what is the issue. And the thing is this, yeah, if now as as computer programmers, especially with these self contained smart contracts, we're beginning to see and think, yeah, an architect like this, yeah, which what this emergence of blockchain actually is. I think you know, obviously it's a new way of making a software company and stuff like that, but what if somebody somewhere in the past or what have you had already achieved this kind of mathematical hyperleap, which is what I think is really going to come? Like people think it's a singularity and that and everything's going to be off. It's like, no, that's the most, the underlying metaphysics, that's the most capable of, of expression of it. But if, the, if there is a superior underlying metaphysics, then it's going to be beyond. Like there's going to be a transcendental world, like, like mathematical transcendence. Transcendentalism, like obviously, you computer with 3D, you know, it CAD CAM numerical control and stuff like that. If it, if you have a, like a, something that's so is infinitely and unlimitedly superior to that, what if you apply it to your artificial intelligence? It's gonna be far greater than any artificial intelligence, you see, because the underlying model, like the underlying metaphysics, is a superior metaphysics, because that's really what's causing it. Right, so imagine that I mean you could build UFOs or you know you could build spaceships or laser beams and or you could build most advanced three D structures or you could crack the code of everything whether it's DNA genetics you name it you'd be in the, you'd be the most powerful man in the world like and especially if it's you have these automated algorithms hitting science and stuff like that. If my encryption was so superior, by the time your artificial intelligent sort of robot army has powered up, got work, we've already left you for shit. Like, so what I'm saying is this, yeah, who eats who? And I think in the end, it's not about who knows what or whatever signals and knowledge. Like, it's a bit like what some of these people, you know, like I mentioned, are talking about whether it's the mainstream version of it or the alt stream. Like whether it's the conspiracy theory side or the government side, I think both of them are kind of in the way of this, or they don't perceive it. As a matter of fact, if you look at that, I was it adversaries, you know, they're adversaries, aren't they? You know, in the battling it out with each other. If people at our civilization or you know had this transcendental maths and was making technology from it, they would be so far above us, yeah. As 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 to say we are so far above chimpanzees and baboons and gorillas and macaw monkeys like and sloths like we're right over primates like like so it's only like it's Darwin or isn't it like the great the evolution of life or what have you what, what, what you know what I mean and they would just leave they would, they could leave us for dust because they would just compute so much more did not know much more. The way they moved the metaphysical chess pieces around would be so tactically superior, like, like, and you know, I don't, you know, I don't ever think artificial intelligence will be superior to man. Like, I think 
I think AI, artificial intelligence, could be replaced with alien intelligence because we are still building. We're building the mathematics. We're building the computers. We're building the graphics cards, the comprehensible tools using our pre- present state of mathematics. And that's actually what 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 it is. What what if like Mister Mister Little Green Man, yeah, comes on the scene with his alien, uh, with his alien code, like he has his alien. Uh, smart contracts or what have you that just infinitely and unlimitedly more technologically powerful than anything we can conceive right we're getting there by the this 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 uh component object module technology this evolutionary pathway but there's going to be a hyper leap when it when it comes collapsed together again like the, and the, and that becomes as common as postage stamps like basically like we're going to see like for now, we can achieve so much with 5G and AI and robots and the rest of it, yeah, and an interconnected world and that. But there's still mysteries that we haven't even scratched the surface of. And it's hypothetical, right? We see what technology we can create with our present level, basically our present standard of architecture, yeah. And not only that, the very standard of architecture itself determines lots of stuff. For example, like the law determines lots of stuff. Or the regulations to you know cause lots of stuff, right? They have an effect on the path of the network, the pathway, like what have you. But now, with a civilization, like call it artificial intelligence uh, or alien intelligence or alien code, like as as it's transcendental mathematics, they could easily build stuff that would blow us out, blow us away, like like they'd easily be able to wipe us out, in spite of all our nuclear warheads and little satellites and stuff like that, because. We think we're limited by the laws of physics, but I don't think we are limited by the laws of physics. I think we're enabled by them, right? And so, and we got to understand that. And we may also, as well, by cutting people out of society and stuff like that, by doing all of this Windows server sort of thing, like applying that mentality and that architecture and that security in- infrastructure, we may be playing out our biggest and brightest minds and our great geniuses. And denying our own selves access to this technology up from the other side, like of you know the next level, like as it were, and I think that's what this blockchain and, and all this is about. Really, I think most people are just applying it to the present world, like about how they live their everyday lives and stuff like that. Uh, but there's a theory, like, like some sort of mathematical complexity that if you could crack it and you had such computational sort of metaphysics. Not just merely combination, like not not like a, a third way between combinatronics or combination on the one hand and uh, uh, and geometry basically or situation analysis on the other. Like there might be another sort of way of doing it that we just simply haven't sourced out yet because we're constantly building from our own architecture. I like if if there is an alien sort of an alien sort of way of doing math. That is beyond our own perception in a minute. Like we could be, you know, it's like looking at all this ancient stuff. Yeah, they may have completely and only different sort of metaphysics and what have you from us. Like, and that's what caused them to build the pyramids and all of these ancient temples. And that because the mentality was completely and only different. It must be possible because they did it. You know, and that's why it's there staring us in the face because they did it. It's there. It's there for the whole world to see, basically. But we never did it. We never achieved that. The stuff we've achieved, basically, in terms of humankind and that, is relative to that fundamental mathematics, ain't it? Like, whatever it was. That's what, you know... So we're always waiting on breakthroughs in these transcendental maths. Alan Turing, just to round it all up. Cryptography. Who who eats who? You know, I'll not use the word, you know, I'll, I'll say who eats who is cryptographic. Like... You see, and almost, you know, uh, you know, you could, you could say, World War Two actually swung around basically on the cryptography and and the cryptographic capability of a single man or a man and his team or they like the unit, the academic department that like he was working within, like, and you could, or you could possibly argue that. Like, because the Germans, once Enigma had unencrypted them and had superior encryption, not only that, they could send less 
they could send messages amongst each other that were more encrypted than what the Germans could do. So the Germans couldn't do it. Right? And every message the Germans sent, they could all encrypt. So who eats who in terms of cryptography? And I think that, you know, that's my personal opinion. If this big, all this all this doom and gloom and all that, like, although the media is like spreading everywhere like muck, like, you know, like the farmer spreads muck on the field, like, like if, if like, and it won't be who who knows what or signals and stuff like that. It's who's, who has the greatest encryption? Like, and that's how it will be that you know at a certain level for everyday people and that this is just my big theory that I've been thinking about recently, especially finding out about this the Bitcoin cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. Because it clearly say that like you know what I mean, it's like it's one of them. Like well, how much can you unbox? How much can you pop out of the hologram? Like wherever that happens to be. So I think there's definitely I think there's definitely something to this mythology. You know, I've seen the ancient Egyptians, these ancient aliens, and what have you. I thought I'd probably draw the line in that some people are being beamed into by aliens by the moon. You know, to make alien technology. I think you know, I think it's, it's funny when people come up on the internet and come out with stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, that's, I suppose that's, you know that's part of the yeah, joy of it all. Right, so listen, mabble on about little green men are like beaming into you know what's going to happen in the future and that. Of course, superior mathematics, it means that if I build an artificial intelligence based on transcendental maths that is superior and incomprehensible, it's going to eat your artificial intelligence alive, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's because it's about who encrypts who. And we could state that, you know, everything is encrypted, like, you know, like, you know, theoretically speaking, and we kind of do this in, in the world, like, for example, we, pre- we take all of the cash and we put it in a safe, for example, and put it under lock and key. So uh, you could say that's a form of encryption. We lock our doors at night. We could say that's a form of encryption, right? Or like we like what's your obfus- ob- obfuscate information, don't we? You know, like like even in, like you know, it's one of them. Not going too going going into off the deep end. We went in a bit off the deep end actually. All right, uh, we're gonna have to get back to it. America's getting online, so we're gonna see fucking America online. Get in, get in there, and have a look at what's going on with crypto. All right. So, in if you had a higher power in cryptography, you could like just basically nick everybody's like uh, cryptocurrencies. Or that being stated, if it was like transcendental, you could, you could like literally, like some sort, of, you could clone, you could rerun it. You know what I mean, and get all them lost bitcoins. Like all the lo- bitcoins that have been lost. And I read a story once where somebody had thrown out lots of hard disks with Bitcoin on it, and and then apparently it was, and it was worth lots of money, and they actually went back to the tip, they were digging up through all of the tip. <laughs> That's hilarious, mate. If you had superior encryption, you could run it again. And if you had a high order computation, you could rebuild it. All right. We're told that mathematically, you know, the whole point is it's mathematical possible or mathematically impossible. I think, I think all things are possible when it comes to the maths. They could quite because there's, you know, there's a lot of theorems and a lot of speculation and stuff like that. And and basically, we can only decode or we can only unencrypt our own metaphysics and our own mathematical ability. So, you know, so it's one of those things, isn't it? Like we could be looking at like the work of the ancients, like these ancient pyramids and all this stuff, and you know it's impressive. It's very impressive. Yeah, the numbers are big numbers. I wonder if it was relatively simple. Like, what if there wasn't no big mysteries behind it? Like, you know, we would have wasted all of our time. Like, you know, instead of just getting on and getting cracking with a job. Like, so one thing's for sure. Or like, I think there's definitely going to be a generational break. Somebody somewhere. He was going to be intelligent enough, and smart enough to be able to pull this uh, ultimate smart contract platform, basically. So it's one of them. I mean, and it, again, it's one of those things that you think the world, the World War Two, hinged on encryption, basically, and the, the fact that Alan Turing could unencrypt the German messages, like, and which gave Alan Turing superior encryption that they could send messages amongst themselves and not get uh, unencrypted. Like, see, and I don't think it will go down to knowledge or, or information. Like. I think, yeah, 
perhaps the heart's in the right place. I don't know. I'm not, not, you know, can't, can't be bothered with all that anyway. But I think that's what it'll be. World War Three or whatever. This alleged World War Three that's always on the horizon, or whatever World War Seven it is, or whatever. They'll come out with a variety of books, don't the new ideas and the rest of it. Because they're really trying to get to the number one in the bestsellers. Like <laughs> that's not. It's not really about you know, you know, because that's actually what it is. Because their metaphysics forces them to be like that and compete like that. You know, it's one of them. For whatever that is worth, like uh, for what you what you can do when when you got you know, some stuff that is just beyond, like it's like it's beyond uh, beyond comprehension, really. I mean. If you could come out with some transcendental mathematics, you could take you could take the entire global economy. Basically, you would be you'd be Satan, like you'd you'd be Beelzebub. You know what I'm saying? You're the fake king of the world, like or what have you. Come on, what these Bible bashers keep going on? <laughs> like, you got to look out for the old devil, aren't you? Like you know, he's the one that's behind Bitcoin. <laughs> he's the devil himself. It was the devil himself, mate, who invented Bitcoin? Like you know. I, uh, but yeah, you would actually be, especially because if you had that amount, if you had that sort of, I know it's a fear of, like, you know what I'm saying, God code, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, but you could definitely, definitely, everything you did, like, you know, you'd just be on, like, another level, like, you know, it's one of those things, you've got to ask yourself, and what if the creator of the universe, a lot is the Leonard, Leonard Suskin, he's pretty big, there was another one, Richard Feynman, he was a top, 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 top lecturer. Like, just based on personality. Like, it was just good to, because, you know, you can tell. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, all oh, the universe is a hologram. And, and, yeah, all oh, there's cold inside of the universe. And, and But the thing is, that's our math for Mike's. And is it clever enough to blob itself into our math to, to deceive us? Or is, is there, is there a, you know, an architect of the Matrix? Yeah, he was, he was that intelligent, he could do this to us. And... Almost like the Buddha thing, you know, like you're gonna die and you're gonna be reincarnated until you figure this shit out, like until you become enlightened. Then in that case, you get to that other place. Like, like it makes me wonder, but you know, what if DNA, what if genetics doesn't work like how we think it works? That's just how our minds work now because of metaphysics. But what is actually going on in the underlying reality, we can't see because we don't have the metaphysics to perceive it. Like, uh, anyway, just talking through. I don't know how we went from Windows Server 22 to this. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah, we'll be back to work time. Yeah, I mean, certainly. I mean, that would look like pr- you could lock, you could lock everything under key because really it's all about encryption, isn't it? Your passwords, username, and password, your bank account, uh, your savings and stuff like that. Obviously, your Bitcoin and cryptos and the rest of it. All right, so. I mean, if you had, like, this, this ultra super encryption, like, you could easily break into the bank and steal all the money digitally. It would be easy as pie. Like, there would be nothing to it if you had that level of, like, if you had, like, that, like, you know, that alien code level or if you had some super quantum computer. You'd just figure it all out. Like, you'd be outsmarted. But well, it's definitely... We're definitely hitting the... Uh, we're, what is it? Hitting the wall? Like, you don't choose uh, an expression from running, like when you run so far, all of a sudden you hit the wall, don't you? Like, that's, like in terms of mathematics and computation, we're getting clever as regards the layout of everything. And uh, I suppose I'm not too up to date on this artificial intelligence, like a lot of the algorithms are on there, but the underlying tech is now there, so we're getting, we're getting there. It's a, my basic opinion is this, right? There's mathematicians, yeah, it does it. Uh, growth and tech, tech, mule, core homologies, algebraic life theorems, and uh, this caliber yarn manifolds, and there's a, them three areas of maths, is that where it, what is actually generating the next level of tech? Like, they're the guys behind the guys, so to speak. Like, from my own, from my own personal researches and stuff like that, you know, everyone thinks about these things from time to time. Like, it's not unusual. Uh, so yeah, the topology you got the language itself, haven't you? It, it, and and you've got the symmetries between the two, the cohomologies, like 
Goff and Day and Chet, Chet Mueller, dead German, German mathematicians, I believe. I could be wrong. I won't quote me on that one. Uh, and yeah, there's still all these mathematical problems like Hilbert's 10th problem. There's a bunch of stuff. Fermat's last film was pretty famous a while back. Right, we're, we're not. I don't think there's been any mathematical breakthroughs that have hit the mainstream media for quite some time. Right, because a mathematician isn't it? A mathematician is a rare thing. Right? But now everyone's got the product of the greatest mathematician of all time, Alan Turing, who, who invented Turing machines, basically. Which is we always break software down into these hypothetical components anyway, like to understand the behavior and express them and stuff like that. So that's what level we're at. Uh, and obviously C++ as well, that's actually what that is, isn't it? That's the same sort of symbolic notation that these cats had out, even from the 1800s and 1900s and what have you. So you can say that, uh, most things for sure, yeah. If it wasn't for Alan Turing and his mind and his Turing machines, yeah, Germany would have won World War Two Easily, mate. Germans were fucking everybody up, you know what I mean? Like, I know it's not politically correct for me to say, but, yeah, Germans would have fucked, fucked up the planet and took over, yeah. You know what I mean? Because when the British started decoding it, decode, they were letting the Russians know everything on a roundabout manner. Like, if you know what I mean. Like, and so, there you go. Cause the, and that's what the Germans had, didn't they? They had the greatest encryption, like you see, which is why they were so lethal and so tactical and that, and nobody could figure them out because it was all encrypted and stuff. Like, but when this Alan Turing comes along and unencrypts it all, his encryption was a greater encryption, like, of a higher level. You see, and that's... That goes back to what I've been saying in today's uh, podcast about who eats who. And at the end of the day, that's what it will be in the end, won't it? It'll be whoever conquers the planet, yeah, and becomes king of the world, like, because nobody can stop him. There's going to be somebody with like, this transcendental technology, this transcendental metaphysics, and making stuff with it, like, you know. So, you know, as everything proceeds, now cars are coming off the production line now that are made out of AI. So, like, the artificial intelligent machine uh, programming language or whatever is, is determining what your car is going to be. So, you're gonna, soon, you're going to rock, rock up to the dealership or whatever, you buy, sell a new car, and every car there, it's not going to be, it's going to be, like, computer designed and computer made with robotic manufacturing. They may, they may be not even humans, not even anything to do with the process. Right. Where the car you drive has had no human input whatsoever in its manufacturing, in its design, in the technology or the, or the onboard electronics or whatever you sat and have. It may, it may come to a point of, like, your full broad-spectrum automation uh, which is just these two machines going around fast, very fast. See, and this is the product of this mathematics. Like, it's our ability to do this. There's been component object module which needed to be superimposed on it, but with this cryptography, we, we're pushing the boundaries of it. Like, there may be, uh, like, like, there may be a mathematics beyond that. Like, in how on earth could people even comprehend it or express it? You know, so that's another like another door shut like so that's another doorway for future exploration if we get a character or whatever it does can do st- such things you know it's one of them there's a compute thing going on with on the stock market as well so if you could build this this alien tech your auto artificial intelligence stockbroker program I mean, it's going to kill the market it would eat everything like basically like, and even though you was pretty fancy with your AI, like the next character or whatever to pop up with this, quite quite easily take the whole thing out. We could have such an intelligence that we all could get played out by it because we, we simply don't do the we don't do the math. Like, yeah, if you know, if, you know, from a you know a theoretical, I uh, you know, you know, from you know, imagine you know from an imaginary perspective. Like you know, in terms of your imagination, if we can imagine it, like you know, Mister Mister Fancy Stockbroker has got an even better AI than anybody else, and he's just going to play everybody else out and take all the cash. You see, like that, that's human. You know what I mean? Like obviously, the, so yeah, I don't know if if somebody had access to such like high level mathematics, would they even be bothered about taking over the world? Like it might not interest them or something. I suppose that's like human fantasy, you know, like you're going to be a boss, you're going to be the top dog, you're going to be the alpha dog, 
Like, if you could perceive this alien code, what have you, it would mean, like, it wouldn't really mean too much to you to be king. Like, your mind would be elsewhere. Like, you'd be delivering other things. Like, hey, yeah. So, I think, in the end, like, I think some of these conspiracy theorists and stuff like that, and some of these mainstream media types, they're having a big war on the internet, basically, a big political debate on the internet. We'll not call it a war, we'll call it a debate. Hotly contested debate. But in the end, it will go to whoever has the, the greatest cryptography. Just like World War Two was won. Yeah. Because they had a superior cryptography. And it was all going Germany's way. Because it had the greatest encryption, you see. Basically. And that is a, a, it's a tactical fact. Basically, you can say what you want about whether you like the Germans or not. Or whatever. Or whether the British Empire deserved it. Or the rest of it, yeah. That's not what we're talking about here. The fact of the matter is this, they rolled all over everyone, and the reason why they had great uh, cryptography. But eventually this Alan Turing comes along and invents a Turing machine, and perceives some mathematical entities yeah, that are of a higher order, a transcendental higher order, in terms of the theory of mathematics, this is the metaphysics, the base plate of the hologram that all of this popped up out of. Basically, that, that's the drawing board, the blueprint, like you say, that's the, that's, that's the source of the architecture. And it was superior, yeah, to German encryption. And therefore it contained all the German encryption, but was not contained by it. So the Germans couldn't perceive the greater encryption and lost the war because of it. Basically, so that's why I think that you know that you know, in the end my point like is being that is that whoever wins, yeah, the victor will have an encryption, a cryptography far greater than the loser. That will wholly contain the loser's encryption. Like it's quite possible, yeah. There could be an even greater encryption still that wholly contains even the winner of this war. But it could be of such a level and of such a uh, design that you can only perceive as much as your encryption or your cryptography allows you to perceive. You know, that's the thing, yeah. And that's a funny thing because you can't really tell how far along you could go. Like, you can't really tell. Like, you know, just like I mentioned, we were, you know, we were more uh, cryptographic than monkeys and chimpanzees, like, and then we could say the aliens, yeah, with the alien code and the alien intelligence and that, are encrypted far greater than us, and they wholly contain all of us, like, theoretically speaking, so then that would mean that a, a, a civilization or a tactical group, like, what this, would it easily be able to take us out, like, easily, they better roll all over us, and it wouldn't be nothing, and nothing we could do could stop it, because they've out encrypted us with this encryption cryptography. Right. In that hypothetical World War Three scenario, okay, everyone's everyone's worried about big tech. Uh, you know, big tech is secretly making robots. <laughs> Everything's going to be, you know, robotic. Like, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see cars, probably aircraft as well, no doubt. Uh, that been no human beings was involved in their creation, whether it was design manufacturing, you know, doing the software, the onboard electronics and stuff like that, or robot manufacturing, robot controlled, the rest of it. So that, you know, we could, you know, man, man has always made machines, right? You know, throughout the history of computer and the history of industry as well, like mainly industry. Like, uh, it's where we get a lot of our Adobe language from. It actually comes from the actual printing press, you know, from the Gutenberg printing press all the way up to Rockwell, what have you, so that's where that 300 DPI technology and all the language behind fonts, stuff like that, uh, sans serif, the rest of it, all of that was very real, living, working trade. Once upon a time, before the computer took out that industry, the computer printer, well, that changed it. All right, so all the, and, the, and those, mathematics, those mathematicians that made those machines, so all throughout history, we've made machines and devices like. But now the machines and devices are making their own machines and devices. Like, you know, we made a machine and the machine made another machine. Like, but we're human. Like, bit of philosophy today. That's what we got on to. We've got some bit of philosophy. Alright, that's my time. Uh, until next time, thanks for t- uh, listening to the Basic Materials podcast. Uh, like, subscribe. Alright, until next time.